Now, before we get into the actual video, I just want to show you just some of the fun things that you can make with melt and pour soap. Now, I do apologize for the graininess and the quality of these photos. They were taken back in 2010. That was at the height of my fun soap making craze. But anyway, let's take a look at them. These are just plain white soaps I made with a little bit of mica for shimmer, bubblegum scented, and then I decorated them with temporary tattoos. Some pretty funny looking breakfast soap. You have your bacon, toast, and eggs. Cupcakes, and this mold was made from actual real cupcakes. One of my favorites, fortune cookie soap. Yes, I cast a mold using fortune cookies, and then I got the takeout containers from Hobby Lobby. I made labels and stuck them on there. I made this mold with real gummy bears. I used clear glycerin soap and bright colors, and they were scented with a tutti frutti fragrance oil. Another candy soap that I made, I made that mold using actual gummy cola bottle candies, and it was scented like cola. Gummy worm soap, I cast that mold using real gummy worms. It was a big seller. People like to play pranks on people with those. Made these with real cookie molds, and the sprinkles on top was just coarse sugar. I made the mold for these using real popcorn. I got the popcorn boxes at Hobby Lobby, put it in bags, and it was scented with buttered popcorn fragrance oil. So it smelled just like buttered popcorn. I made the mold for these using real rock candy, and then I got the sticks and just put in them to make it look like candy. Here's some more candy. I made the mold using real Swedish fish and just cast the soap in it. And now we have these little alien soaps, and I embedded some little toys that I got at Party City. These are big sellers for party favors. Now, let's get on with the video. All right, y'all, I hope you enjoyed those photos at the beginning of the video. But I just wanted to show y'all some of the fun things that you can make with Melt and Pour. As far as my history with Melt and Pour goes, I have been messing with this stuff for a little over 20 years now. Yes, Melt and Pour soap has been around for a very long time. And I used to have a very lucrative soap shop on Etsy. I sold in bulk to a lot of boutiques. And my specialty was, you know, things like the fun soaps that you saw at the beginning. That was my specialty. And I still like making those. But today, I want to go over just some of the very basics of getting into melt and pour, and then we're going to make a few bars of melt and pour soap, okay? So when it comes to melt and pour, you're not actually making soap, okay? Let's get that out of the way. You're not making soap, because this is the soap. Melt and pour soap is basically taking soap that has already been made, and you're just chopping it up, melting it down, and then you're pouring it into a mold. You can add fragrances and colors and embeds and additives, and we're going to go into that here in a second. So you're basically rebatching. okay? You're not making soap. To actually make soap, and I'm not talking about Castile soap. I'm talking about soap, bar soap like this. It has to go through a saponification process, which is a mixture you know, of lye and fats and oils. And it's an actual process that is called cold process or hot process soap. With this, it's very beginner friendly. So that is one of the big reasons why a lot of people get into melt and pour soap. First off, you're going to need your soap base. Now, when I make large batches of soap, of course, I have a wholesaler's license and I buy mine in bulk. I mean, big, like 100 pound blocks of the stuff, okay? Okay. But if you're not going to be doing that and you, you just want to have some fun with it, maybe as a hobby, making it for yourself or selling it, you can go to craft stores and get it. This base right here, this came from Hobby Lobby. And as you can see, there's 32 ounces here. That's two pounds and it's marked for $20. I'm not a fan of paying full price for anything. So keep an eye on their ads, Michael's, you know, wherever else that you buy your crafting supplies, just keep an eye on their ads for when this goes on sale, okay? Like I said, I don't like buying this stuff full price. So when I went to Hobby Lobby the other day, this was on sale for 40% off, okay? So I paid 40% off of the $19.99. But this is just your standard melt and pour soap base, but this is a little bit more special because this is oatmeal soap. It already has oatmeal in it. So you don't have to worry about grinding up your oatmeal and adding it to your soap base. They have several different kinds. They have the clear soap, like you saw with the, uh, the gummy worms and the gummy bears. That's made with a clear base. And with the clear base, your colors are very vibrant, okay? Now, with the white soap like this, your colors are going to be more muted. And I'm going to show you later on in, in future videos some tips and tricks on your colorants and how to make them vibrant and whatnot in various different soap bases. 
but you have your clear soap, you have your base white soap. They have, now I'm just talking at Hobby Lobby, okay? They have this oatmeal base. Then they have like goat milk, which is gonna cost a little bit more. Then they have an avocado base. And if you'll look at the label here, this says suspension formula. You have your regular soap base, and then you have these bases that are suspension formulas. Now, suspension formulas are very good, like this with the oatmeal in it, if you're going to be adding things to your soap. If you use regular soap base, depending on the thing that you're adding to the soap, it might be a little heavy, so it's going to all sink down to the bottom of your mold when you pour your soap in. Or if it's a little bit lighter density than your soap, it's all going to rise up to the top. So all of your additives, like what I'm about to show you here, all of your additives will either float or they will sink depending on what you're using. With the suspension base, it helps to hold the things suspended so that's evenly, you know, distributed throughout your soap. But for the purpose of this video, like I said, I'm going to be using everything that I purchased from Hobby Lobby. I would not suggest you go spend a whole lot of money on this stuff unless you know for sure that you want to do this for a business, then you can worry about wholesaling and buying in bulk. Okay, as far as additives, this is just one thing that you can put in your soap. This is a shell powder of walnuts, finely, finely ground seed. This is very powdery, but it's still going to give you abrasiveness. It is going to give you exfoliating properties. Very good for body bars. Now, you can have all sorts of additives and embeds. You can have dried herbs. You can have this, just all kinds of like pumice powder, which is really good, you know, for scrubbing your hands and your feet. There's just all sorts of things that you can add into it. But you need to make sure that things like this, the walnut powder, it's not big chunks. It needs to be very finely ground or else you're going to risk, you know, like micro cuts on the skin and nobody wants that. So you can get things like this. We're, we've got some high winds outside, so if you hear a racket, it's the tree branches brushing against the window. Now, as far as fragrance oils go, I purchased mine from a wholesale house once again in big, huge bottles, like 16-ounce bottles, about by the half pound, about by the pound. Um, but when you're first getting into it, you can buy small bottles like this at pretty much any craft store. This came from Hobby Lobby once again. Country Lane brand has been around for quite a while, and I've never had any problems with their fragrances. Now, as you can see here, this is liquid candle and soap fragrance. It is labeled, okay? It is labeled for candles and soap. A lot of different oils, not to get into all this right now, but you cannot use certain fragrance, blah, blah, fragrances, fragrances in candles and soap. It has to be specified that it can be used in both. Or it will be specified if it is candle only or skin safe, okay? So you can't just go pick up candle fragrance and use it in your soap. Don't do that. You're going to cause breakouts, you know, <laughs> bad, bad inflammatory reactions, and that's not good for anybody. But this is marked safe for both. Now, if you look on the back of the package here, any fragrance that you buy at a store, you really need to pay attention to this, and it will tell you, the specific usage guidelines, if you're going to use it in candles or if you're going to use it in soap. So you see this right here? This is for soap. Use at a 0.25 to 0.5% concentration, which is a quarter teaspoon to a half teaspoon per pound. If you use any less than that, your fragrance is pretty much going to be non-existent, okay? I like a lot of fragrance. Now, at Country Lane, their fragrances are generally not very strong, okay? So I like to use sort of like the, the higher percentage. So I would use a half teaspoon per pound. I have gone up to one teaspoon per pound, but you just have to really be careful when you're using more fragrance than what the package tells you to because then your ratios will be off and your soap can bleed fragrance, okay? Glycerin soap has a very high moisture content to begin with. That's why it's very, very like creamy and slick and really moisturizes the skin because it has such a high moisture content. And because it does have glycerin in it, it's a humectant. And humectants draw moisture out of the air and draw moisture to it. So your soap is probably going to be drawing moisture to it. And if you have a high liquid additive concentration like your fragrance oil, your soap is going to sweat. You're going to have like these nasty little gloopy looking beads all over it. And then you pick it up. It's going to be slimy and it's going to be nasty. Because if you can see here, first ingredients, water 
and glycerin, okay? Very high moisturizing properties. Now, what all do you need in order to put your soap together? You don't need anything fancy. You need a mold, okay? You need a soap mold. You can get those at Hobby Lobby, pretty much any craft store. Silicone molds work the best. If you can't find silicone molds, then use, you know, regular soap molds. There's lots of soap molds out there made out of plastic like this. But if your soap is heated up too much when you pour it in, you can risk melting and warping those molds. If you can find silicone ones, that's fine. For hand soaps, you can use like little silicone ice trays, anything like that, that you look at and say, hey, that's cute. I can use that for my soap. Go to Hobby Lobby. If you don't like their soap molds, look over in the bakery section and you can find silicone molds for your like little miniature cakes and whatnot. Those make great soap molds too. I've used those plenty of times. Then you need something with which to measure. I use a Pyrex measuring cup. You're gonna see all that here in a minute. Pyrex measuring cup. You can either put your soap in the microwave to melt it or do like a double boiler method. You can have like a saucepan setting here with some water, put your measuring cup in it with your soap down in there and let it heat up that way, you know, whichever way you wanna do it. But this is just the basic stuff that you need. As far as colorants go, don't use food coloring. Please stop using food coloring damn it in your bath and body products it gets on my nerves when people do that and then they wonder why it stains your tub stains your skin stop it you need to use soap colorant okay use soap colorant for this i'm not going to be using colorant because i want to be a little bit more on the natural side but i will get all into that in future videos where i show you my actual soap colorants it needs to be marked skin safe for bath and body products not food coloring, okay? And don't use candle coloring either. No liquid candle coloring. And some candle coloring comes in little wax blocks that you chop up and melt along with your candle wax. Don't use that in here, okay? Please don't do that. So I'm gonna clean this out of here. Let me get my mold and a measuring cup and we're gonna make some really simple, easy massage soap bars. Okay, this is the mold that I'm gonna use once again from Hobby Lobby. Okay, it's a squishy silicone type mold. It has four cavities. You can see like the little nubbies right here? Really good massage bars. These are also great for making lotion bars. Now, I do have a video on making lotion bars. It's an old video, but I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna revamp a lot of my old videos, okay? So anyway, fresh out of the package, this is our mold. Now, how much soap is each cavity gonna hold? I have not measured these, but what I like to do with a new mold is I have my notebook over here, right? In my notebook, I'm gonna write down like four cavity silicone body massage mold. And if you wanna write down where you bought it, cause sometimes I can look at it and say, oh yeah, I got that at Hobby Lobby or Michaels or wherever, write that down. Then fill the cavity up with water. Pour that water into your measuring cup. And you're like, oh, okay, well that's four ounces. So that bar is gonna hold four ounces by volume, okay? I'm not going by weight, four ounces by volume or however much. And then as you are melting your soap, you put your soap in there and you melt it down. You're like, all right, well that's three ounces of soap. I need to melt a little bit more. Okay, well there's my four ounces, I'm ready. And then you know that you have enough soap to pour into your mold. I haven't done that, and just looking at these, I'm going to assume that these hold four ounces each. That's just what it looks like to me. Three or four ounces is kind of hard to tell because of this. But what I'm going to do now is, let's get our soap out. and just a piece of paper. <laughs> this piece of paper that was the backing for this. So then I'm going to take out my melt and pour here. Let's set this here so I don't get stuff all over the table. You can either cut it in the container or dump it out and cut it. And you can see it has like the little flakes of oatmeal down in there. It's fairly easy to cut. I'm just gonna cut that like so, and then flip it out, and we're gonna chop it up. All right, so now I have a blob of soap out, and I'm gonna melt this down. You wanna cut it into smaller pieces. Why do you wanna do that? If you cut it into big blobs like this, and you throw that in there, and then you go to microwave it, you know, melt it, whatever, um, then you run the risk of burning your soap. And once you have burned melt and pour soap, whoo, this stuff stinks. If you burn it, it stinks. So you want to make sure that you chop it up into smaller pieces that helps it melt more quickly. And it helps it to melt more evenly. You know, if you start to microwave, which my favorite method, you know, I microwave mine. 
in 15 second bursts and then I stir it, microwave it another 15 seconds. Stir it and just keep on like that until it is melted. You don't want it bubbling, okay? If your soap is rolling and bubbling, it's too hot. You don't want it to be that hot, it's way too hot. You want this to just be melted. And the bigger chunks, it's hard to do that. So you want small chunks to prevent burning and promote more even melting. So now I'm gonna chop all this up and I'm just gonna throw this in my measuring cup. Please use a Pyrex measuring cup. Um, I have had plastic ones to crack and that makes a mess. So please use Pyrex. This knife is kind of dull. I know people's like, you're gonna cut yourself. This knife is pretty dull. This is um, a crafting knife. But anyway, let me do this. I'm gonna go throw it in the microwave and I'm gonna melt it. Okay, so our soap is melted and melt and pour soap does cool fairly quickly, okay? So once it's melted, you really need to start working with it. So now I'm gonna add in a little bit of my walnut powder here. And just stir, stir, stir. Now if your soap starts to set up while you're working with it, just go stick it back in the microwave. I'm using one of these little silicone spatula things and any clumps of any ingredients, just break them up like so. Just break them up, work them back and forth, and they will break up. Okay, like so, and that's enough. You don't need a whole lot. And now for my fragrance. You don't want your soap to be very, very hot. Now I know if you can see it on camera, you can see there's like some steam coming off the soap. I'm in a very cold room, okay? This is like the coldest room in my house. So it's gonna steam a little bit. But now I'm gonna add in some of my fragrance and I just eyeball mine because I know about how much to put in for this amount. I'm just putting in some drops. I'm gonna squirt a little bit down in there, okay? When you're first getting started with this, you wanna measure everything and just pay very close attention to your measurements so that later on you can just eyeball it, right? Okay, now you want to stir, stir, stir and make sure that your fragrance oil is well incorporated. Why are you falling? Stay, okay? Just make sure everything is very well mixed in, okay? Now let's pour it into our mold because this is a silicone mold it's gonna be very easy to pop out. I love these molds. So I'm just gonna start pouring here. Just make sure that we pour gently and just make sure that we fill up all the little nubby spaces down there. And as the soap cools, it will shrink ever so slightly, not a whole lot, just a little bit. Okay, you hear my cat in there. Oh, this soap smells so good, like coffee and then that warm scent of the oatmeal. Okay. It looks like I could have melted just a tiny bit more. And if you notice that, it's perfectly okay. Actually, I'm kind of glad I did that so I can show you. Now, you see how this one is really not full all the way up to the top? Chop up just a little bit more soap put it in here and melt it and pour it in there before it starts to harden up, okay? Now you see all these little bubbles right here? How do you get rid of the bubbles? With alcohol, rubbing alcohol. I have some alcohol in a spray bottle and actually I have a spray nozzle that I put on the top of this bottle. When you see all these little bubbles before your soap hardens up, spray it with this alcohol and it will pop all of those bubbles. So I'm gonna melt a little bit more soap and then let's get rid of these bubbles. So I have topped off this soap. You see how I'm just spraying it with some of that rubbing alcohol and you see how the little bubbles have disappeared. Now the back of this is just a little bit rough because yeah, Hamilton, my corgi, ran in here and hit the table and jostled everything. So um, anyway, that will not affect the outcome of our soap. So now all you have to do is just let this sit here and cool down and harden up. Now don't mess with it. And listen, don't put it in the refrigerator or the freezer. I have seen so many people do that to try to speed up the cooling down process. Now what's gonna happen when you do that is, when you take it out, wherever you have it, refrigerator, freezer, whatever, when you bring it out of there, condensation is gonna to start to form. 
your soap is going to get slippery and it's not going to be good so just let this set out at room temperature depending on how cool or warm your house is it won't take very long for this to set up give it an hour or two sometimes it only takes 30 minutes like said, my house is pretty cool right now might only take 30 minutes it also depends on how hot your soap was when you poured it into the mold so just give it a little bit make sure it's completely set up and then we will pop it out and see what it looks like i believe this should be set up and ready so now let's take it out of the mold because it's a silicone mold this is going to be fairly easy you can just grab the edges of your mold just gently just pull it. You see how the edge of the soap is just coming away from the edge? And then just take your fingers and just push the soap out like so. Just trying to gently pull this out. There we go. Set that down. Pop your mold back down. Eh, there's something on me. Okay. And now you see how the oatmeal and the exfoliant that we put in there, you see how it's all nicely evenly distributed throughout the soap? That's because we use the suspension base, okay? This is still a little bit warm, so I'm just gonna set it over here and let it completely cool down. Sometimes it's hard to tell if it's completely cooled down filling it through the mold. It's just a tiniest little bit warm, so I'm just gonna set it over there. Now listen, for home use, it is absolutely fine to store your soap in like a Ziploc baggie, like a sandwich bag, because this soap, this is ready to use. It doesn't have to cure any further. Unlike, you know, hot or cold process, you know, there is a curing period. You don't have that with this. This is ready to use right now. But because of the high moisture content, if you leave this soap out, let's just say I popped it out, I'm gonna leave it here and just let it sit. It will start to dry out and it will shrink a little bit. Now that really doesn't matter with a design such as this, but if you're using intricate designs and you don't want it to warp, then you don't want to just leave it setting out in a room somewhere. So I would take this soap, once it cools down completely, stick it in a Ziploc bag and you can store it that way. Now, if you're gonna package it up, like to send it to someone or maybe even to sell it, you can use shrink wrap you can get shrink wrap sleeves and we're gonna go over packaging and stuff in a different video, okay? Not this one, cause this one's been long enough. But you can actually shrink wrap it or you can take something like saran wrap, wrap it once, wrap it twice, make sure it is nice and sealed up and then you can just stick a label on it or you can wrap it in some decorative paper. I used to take my soap bars and wrap it in saran wrap once or twice. And then I would wrap it in a really pretty decorative paper and take raffia and tie around it, make a pretty bow, put on a pretty label, and I would do mine that way. But right now, this is ready to use. So there's that. Really, really super simple. So that is gonna be the end of this video. Like I said, in a future video, we're gonna go over a few more really fun things to do with, with melt and pour soap. Then we'll get into the hot process, the cold process, packaging and all that so if you would please give this video a thumbs up click subscribe check me out on other forms of social media the links to all of which will be in the description box down below and i'll talk to y'all later bye